Stop trying to get me to talk about the tunnels, man. Nothing good can come from a conversation on the tunnels. I'm not equipped to talk about the tunnels, okay? I saw the tunnel stuff just like everybody else. Unlike everybody else, I said, you know what? It's not my place to comment on the tunnels. I don't know. It's just, it's fraught with peril, to be honest with you. I'm not... That's exactly right. I barely even commented on the lady building the mine shaft under her own house. I don't want my words to be misused by bad actors, okay? What do you mean? It's really funny? I know, and that's the problem. <laughs> it used to be, we used to be a proper society where you could see a man climbing out of a tunnel and be like, what? That's an adult man climbing out of a tunnel? That's pretty wild. Nowadays, it's all fraught with uh, societal criticism. The, the, the comedy of it has been lost, and, and maybe that's just the price we have to pay. Hey, by the way, I saw a lot of gamers playing Pacific Drive. How'd they get that demo? Is that demo available, or is that demo you gotta, you gotta kiss the ring of the publisher? Which I don't mind. You gotta kiss the ring? Son of a bitch. Gotta remember my email login. Can I say that I also saw a tweet? Uh, and it made me laugh because it reminded me of Dan. It said, my old boss used to declare something he called email bankruptcy. Once every two months, he would select all in his email inbox and then just hit archive all and go from a clean slate. His logic was, if it's really important, they'll email me again. <laughs> I think, honestly, I don't do that, but I really do respect it. Yeah, Dan used to delete his. But I mean, I don't know if there's that much of a difference. If anything, deleting them might be better than archiving them. Because if you archive them in court, they'll be like, look, you got this email that you claim not to have seen. Whereas Dan could just be like, I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> they claim to have emailed me. It doesn't appear to exist in my inbox. The first email I've ever received on this account that I've had for 17 years came in 62 days ago. Officer, Dan deletes Dropbox uploads while he's still streaming. What is that? Why is he uploading stuff to Dropbox while he's streaming? Also, listen, I have my share of technical problems. Don't get me wrong. But whenever... Someone, I'm, and it, I apologize to Justin because it most recently happened to him. Whenever I'm streaming with someone and they say, uh, oh, the recording broke because my hard drive filled up. Guys, this, this is not an industry in its infancy anymore, okay? We've been doing this for a decade. We got, that's something you got to just do a quick cursory glance every morning and be like, that was you a few years ago? I know, and people can change, bro. When is the last time you heard me say my... I have to delete a video game sometimes to download something from Steam. That's because every video game is fucking like 75 gigabytes now. It's too much. Have you ever considered declaring hard drive bankruptcy? Yeah, but that hard drive bankruptcy only hurts you. Because you're going to be like, oh, I want to use this application. Oh, I haven't downloaded it. Now I got to download it. Email and uh, bankruptcy only hurts the people who want to reply from you, which is based. <laughs> Some people should expect a reply. Some people shouldn't have emailed in the first place. It sucks that both of them kind of get hit. There's a lot of collateral damage there, but like sometimes there's just too many emails, bro. I haven't seen Oppenheimer yet. Is it... I, I saw... <laughs> I saw a tweet that said, damn, Oppie was really on his knees crying to his wife about his side piece committing suicide and she told his ass to get back to work. Is that true? Yeah. That's crazy, man. <laughs> Just watch it. It's not on the digital services yet, bro. Here's how to cure your depression the Oppie way. You're going to take the neutrinos. You're going to put them on the grill. You're going to take uh, Richard Feynman and Niels Bohr and Enrico Fermi. You're going to put them on the grill. Can't forget the Bev. Guy inventing the nuclear bomb drinks seven martinis with lunch. You know they cook that shit up on two beers, right? Another round, 2022. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but just watch the, um, the first half. 
The first half is really good. The second half, who, who, oh, the consequences of our action. The first half, bro, when there, it's a party, brother. There's this anecdote I saw on Twitter where Bruce Willis tried to get like a horrible movie made um, and it put the studio into such financial disarray that as kind of like a counterbalance, he agreed to do three pictures for the studio that financed it. One of them was Armageddon. One of them was The Kid. And this might be the third one. Not every gift is the sixth sense. Not every gift is a blessing. I should have gotten that. They should make a movie called like The Seventh Sense. And it would be about the kid from The Sixth Sense, but he's going through like marital troubles. And his wife could be like, you may see dead people, <laughs> but you don't even listen to me. And he could like solve crimes or something. That's the third sense though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like maybe she can like, I don't know, see like um, electricity or something. <laughs> Did you see the dude who kept photoshopping young women when they would post selfies? He would photoshop them and be like, hey, nice picture. Here's what you would look like if you were black or Chinese. And then he became like Twitter's main character for, I don't know, like a week. And then someone created an anonymous account and posted a picture of his house and then a picture of himself and said, listen, scumbag, I know where you live and this is what you look like. And then he replied to it and said, cool, here's what I would look like if I was black or Chinese. I'm not saying you gotta hand it to him, but the reply is one of the funniest comebacks I think you could possibly conceive of in that situation. It's actually so good. <laughs> And the dude who posted a picture of his house deleted his account. Oh, 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 oh. it's that's when they say a good offense is a great defense. The best offense is a good defense. Oh, man. That site's still got a little magic in it. Not a lot. Let's be clear. <laughs> There's still something rattling around in those old bones. I still think we lose, for the record. <laughs> Did you see the Yams Walmart post on Twitter? Yams Walmart. I did not see the Yams, son of a bitch. 25 minutes till Jackbox. Searching, uh, I'll search on Bing, Yams Walmart. Sweet potato sold in singles. The review is for, who, what motherfucker is reviewing sweet potatoes on walmart.ca? That's an affront to Mother Nature. You're giving God a 4.3 for the sweet potato. Mm, a little bit too much uh, sodium chloride for me. Today, after... Okay, here's the tweet. Thank you, librarian. Today, after almost two years of leaving a yam on the Walmart customer service desk nearly every week, I was approached by two managers who cornered me as I was headed to the checkout. Without any introduction, they looked me in the eyes and whispered, Why yams? The, here's the previous tweet. Every time I go to Walmart, I leave a single packaged yam on their back customer service counter, and I've done it 58 times now, and no one has caught me yet. These are all different yaminings, and I will never be stopped. The yamining is now upon you. Okay, next, next tweet. My heart dropped. I've been caught. I said, um, it's sort of like a prank, and they both laughed. I felt immediate relief, and they explained that it's been driving them insane. They thought one of the employees was pranking them. When that employee switched stores and it kept happening, they decided to investigate and check the cameras. They saw me on the cameras do it today and decided to approach me. I apologized, and since I've been doing it for so long, I thought the jig is up so much for the yamming. But then they said, oh, no, don't worry. We don't mind. I said, what? They said, we don't care. It was just driving us insane. We just wanted to know. They agreed to not tell anyone it's me, and they gave permission to keep doing it forever because they th also think it's funny. So I shall yam forever, yam for eternity, the yam will never stop. Honestly, I understand this poster. I don't think that it's particularly funny. I think it is a little holds up spork. But in the interest of full disclosure, there used to be, when I was a younger man, 19, 20 years old, there used to be a restaurant uh, in downtown Kingston called The Slip. Be a magical piece. 
It had the important part about the restaurant is that it was named The Slip. And it had an extremely large back window that opened onto the patio. And you could walk off the patio right onto the sidewalk. It was on like the harbor, essentially. We used to do a thing. We get a couple of beers on, in us on a Saturday. We would walk down to the slip. We would say table for X, however many people there were. They would bring a menu. We would look at the menu. They'd bring us a glass of water. We would drink a little bit of the glass of water. And then as soon as the server left our eyesight, we would just leave through the back patio. We didn't dine and dash. We didn't order food and eat it and then run away. We just went in under the pretense of getting a table because we're going to dine, sat down at the restaurant, took a couple of sips of water, and then walked out the back door, leaving them to wonder. Huh. In, in my head, they're like, no, where did they go? But probably they were actually like, hey, those guys just walked out the back, just so you know. And they're like, oh, okay, I guess they had somewhere to be. But in my head, it was like the end of the usual suspects. Like they ran out and they're like, I've already like changed my shirt at that point. And then we would, call, we would be like, hey, do you want to go give him the slip today? I thought it was funny. That's pretty much on the same level as the yamming. So I'm not going to like, you know, I'm not going to insult the poster. We all go through a yamming phase in our lives, maybe. Great prank, bro. <laughs> Dude, they entertained me. That's why the townie, townies hated us. Bro, I was a townie. <laughs> I grew up in basically in Kingston. Would you still do it if the staff said they were okay with it? No, because the point of it is that they were supposed to be confused. That would have taken all the magic away from me. It wouldn't have been any, any purpose at that point. So I understand the yamming. What I don't understand is the kind of sicko that would give sweet potatoes 4.3 out of 5. They're a 5 out of 5 at being what they are, which is sweet potatoes. <clears throat> you know what I was thinking this morning? It's, in a way, we're, we're cursed but also blessed to be living through this weird era of social media. Uh, when I was a, a kid, like a teenager, only other teenagers and uh, like the weirdest 30-year-olds you've ever met were on social media. If you went someplace to talk about video games, it was like a bunch of other 10th graders and then like one dude who's like, I just got discharged from the Marines. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you what life is like. That I had to kill so many people. They're like LARPing being John Wick. I had to look them in the whites of their eyes and take the life from them. And then it was like, you know... I feel like millennials, Gen X, and boomers got on while Gen Z was still, you know, in like elementary school. But now we have like five generations of people on social media and they all have like their own unique brand of posting. It's very interesting. And then like the people that are over the age of 70, it's like all of their posts are like beautiful morning today and it's a picture of like the flowers on their windowsill. And then the boomers are like obviously faked skit that happened in a Target. I can't believe this is real. And then millennials are like 375 character long joke to get to the worst punchline you've ever heard. Gen X is like, nobody remembers us. I broke my arm on the playground as a kid. And then all the Gen Z posts are like, normalize fucking hating your geometry teachers. Like we really, you normally don't get access to this much of a, uh, a symbolic cross-section of society. Like, I think this is unique throughout human history. Do you drink Josh? Hey, I, I made my uh, stream title today, drinking and drinking on my red Josh, and then everybody told me that it was cringe. So I changed it to, there must be some Toros in the atmosphere because it's cold out here. I still don't get it. <clears throat> Josh is popping off. because It's a vintage of wine. That's funny because it's called Josh, and Josh is like a very normie name, at least if you're my age. Rubbing and rubbing on my yellow leg is the just making sure I don't fit in meme. Deep fried and, and flipped. This is what, and Prezzo, I, I admire your courage, right? Because being early on the meme is almost as bad as being late. Like if you're early on the meme, people are like, this isn't funny. If you're late on the meme, people are like, this isn't funny anymore. But some people have to be early on the meme in order to get the meme to the point where the normies start to appreciate it. 
it takes a lot of, I mean, you're putting your nuts on the table to be out there and saying, drinking and drinking on my red Josh. I'm going to say this is mom's revenge. I'm going to say this is Bilbo's um, house. Oh, Gotham Knights. <laughs> I completely forgot that this game existed. Gotham Knights? Everyone did? You did the Grease song to this? Oh, did I? And oh, those Gotham Knights. Tell me more. Okay, that makes sense. I could, I could see my, I could reconstruct the bit, even though I don't remember it. Are you going to play Gotham Knights? Oh, well, oh, well, oh, well, oh, whoop. Tell me more, tell me more. Are you in Arkham yet? Tell me more, tell me more. Is the Riddler a threat? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And oh, those Gotham Nights. You know what I'm, that's, that's, what if Batman, <clears throat> me in the Saturday Night Live writer's room, what if Grease was about uh, Batman? By the way, I saw, like everybody else, I saw those leaked screenshots from the Suicide Squad game, and I share your um, cynicism. I'm glad that society is finally starting to get the right opinion, which is that video games, especially, especially AAA video games, have too many stats and too much shit on the screen these days. Dark Souls, I, I know this is like a normie take now, Dark Souls is perfect. There's like one, there's two stats that matter. Damage and weight, okay? Everything else, they got other stats, not necessary. The only thing that matters is can you dodge and can you attack? That's it. You don't need the weight of this does, uh, is this, and then it does this much damage against green enemies, this much damage against yellow enemies, this much damage against armored enemies, this much damage against psionic enemies, and also it has this much lightning damage, this much poison, this much psionic, this much cold. It's, it's just... And then you got to get the shards, the shards, you can convert the shards into gears, the gears, you take them to the engineer, they make your blacksmith level up so he uses less shards to imbue your weapon with extra defense, and it's just like, it's just too much, man. That's more like Lies of P. Yeah, but the gameplay of Lies of P is fire. It, I mean, I'll have you know it made Co Carnage's list of the top 10 games of 2023. What was last year again, 2023? Never have I been happier to have a flat of Coke Zero in the joint. Dude, by the way, th here's one for you, uh, librarian. Let me, let me hot swap this over real quick. Here's one for, for you, librarian. Not me getting served a perfect tweet uh, by the algorithm yesterday that said, it's crazy that we invented diet sodas that are zero calorie and taste better than regular sodas and yet people still refuse to drink them on principle. And then like everybody replied to that tweet saying, actually aspartame gives you cancer and I don't want cancer. And then like they replied with links of like hundreds of peer reviewed studies that were like actually, uh, that was one paper in 1982 and everything else since then says that there is no conclusive link whatsoever. And then the second part that made it funny for me is I clicked on OP's profile and they follow me. So in a way, I was like, I feel like I inspired this viral tweet by drinking Coke Zeros on stream every day. It's true. Nutritionists are like diet sodas, a miracle nectar. I don't know if that part's true. But then people who got all their scientific information from like their uncle in 1997 are like, actually, it's bad for you. You are a hero. I know. I think it's one of those things where Coke Zero tastes so good that people don't believe that it can't be bad for you. It's the same reason, like, and, and this, people aren't ready for this, and maybe time will prove this to be idiotic. I'm not even taking a stand. I feel the same way whenever people are like, hmm, surely we're never going to reap, like, the long-term costs of everybody in society being on this miracle drug Ozempic. And I'm like, 
I get that you've seen like a lot of movies in your life and maybe in the movies, everybody gets hooked on the, the O and then the pharmaceutical company like tweaks one little chemical and all of a sudden, you, you know, they're an army of zombies or something like that. But this shit is like, I'm not saying some shady stuff doesn't go down, but it is also being like studied by the smartest biochemists on planet Earth. 27 hours a day so just give like i'm not saying that you should just be like yum 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 i'm just saying aspartame in particular it's been studied since like 1902 bro they got if, if they have any chemical on earth figured out it's got to be aspartame i look at you and know it can't be good for you what the fuck post your picture r man 484 864 not even subbed what, eight bucks a month is too expensive for you? Dot Elon Musk dot JPEG slash user rman864. Let me see. Yes! <laughs> See I'm about to tear you down, brother. 932 messages following for 11 years. Previously subbed for one month. Those are rookie numbers. <clears throat> I look at you and know it can't be good for you. It gives you cancer. I look at you and know it can't be good for you. I look at you and know it can't be good for you. Still gives you cancer. It actually does give you cancer. I want to smoke the shit that made Tom Cruise. I want to smoke the shit that made Lance Stroll. Chick-fil-A is better. Cran grape is my favorite type of juice. You just made more money eating fries than I'll make in a year. That's probably not true, but... Compliment accepted. <laughs> I think you should leave references. Well, it's not all bad. I think the thing that's crazy is that people, I think it's one of those things, people want Coke Zero to be bad for you so they don't have to deal with the pain of having not been consuming Coke Zero. If we accept that aspartame is not bad for you, then there's no reason for you to have gone 15 years without drinking Coke Zeros. The, the cumulative loss of value there is too much for the modern mind to bear. I just drink water. No, no, no. We did this part yesterday. Dude who's addicted to vaping uh, lemon pound cake juice 10 times a day. You ever hear of water? <laughs> that one got me in trouble. Uh, people were adding me in other chats and saying, hey, that vaping bit was kind of fucked up yesterday. <clears throat> That's how I know it's true. If Coke Zero is so good, why don't they make a Coke One? You expect me to be mad about that, but I actually think there's a chance you might be onto something. When you already, when you have a zero calorie soda, imagine how good like one gram of sugar would be in it to add four calories. Holy, or like a sparkling water. Like sparkling water, I like it and I like that it's zero calories. But imagine what one gram of sugar would do when you're coming from zero. If you're going from 20 grams to 21, marginally it probably doesn't improve it that much. But if you go from zero to one, that's a billion percent increase, bro. Holy. Are you gonna play Gotham Knights? Oh well, oh well, oh well, oh whoop. Tell me more, tell me more. Are you in Arkham yet? Tell me more, tell me more. Is the Riddler a threat? Uh-huh, 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 and oh, those Gotham now.